Let me introduce to you David Wölfe, the last speaker of today's session. Uh, David studied engineering in Flensburg, and now he's a team manager at EWC, a weather consult. And he will tell us uh, about from zero to continuous delivery in 30 minutes. So please have a warm welcome to David. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so, uh, well, I'm pretty much amazed how many people are actually here. I thought like no one really cares for, for this topic, but uh, maybe I just uh, was wrong on that. Um, so, I'm David. My topic is from uh, zero to continuous delivery in 30 minutes. And uh, this topic was basically, well, uh, an issue we had in the company that we have like, we have like a lot of programs, um, scientific computation problems, we have a lot, a lot of dependencies, and especially Pandas seems to drift away sometime. Then you have some Pandas 0 0.8, which is really, really ugly, and then an API changes and everything, blah, blah. So in the end, you turn out to have some software on your server, and you don't really know how it got there. And in the end, uh, we said, like, oh, yeah, we have to do it better. And after, I think, like one and a half years of trying around, fizzling with different packages, with package managers and everything, uh, I found out that the answer is actually surprisingly easy. And it's so easy that I can set it up in 30 minutes. And that is what I wanted to share with you. So maybe you have some, well, faster success than we did in the, uh, in the beginning. OK. So um, to start with, that's me. Obviously, on a day when I'm uh, less hungover than today. And um, just a short introduction, what I'm doing. Um, I'm from the uh, wind energy um, community, or wind energy science. Um, and I care for basically three fields. I do uh, data science and operations, because I have to get that data science stuff tools somehow into on a server. Um, I also do a, a management of a small team. And I also do some project management, uh, which is, well, someone has to do it, basically. Huh? And um, besides that, my heart beats for uh, energy, and especially renewable energy, or somehow of s sustainability, uh, also when it comes to coding. So I really like producing code that can be uh, like repaired and fixed and uh, without throwing it away and writing it new. Um, Besides, uh, I'm on LinkedIn and Xing, and if you care for or are interested in my person or in the work I've shown you here, uh, then please feel free to just uh, add me somewhere or connect or um, just have a look or whatever you like. Um, okay, let's go on. That's the content. Uh, I think I'm um, actually prepared for 45 minutes, but as the slot here is shorter, so uh, I will skip the preliminaries. But basically, um, I will give you a brief introduction of what is continuous delivery or what I expect to be continuous delivery. I will uh, show you which tools I've chosen and um, illustrate those tools a little bit more in detail. And afterwards, there is the hands-on example um, where I want to show you actually how that it works. And by the way, um, it's all on GitLab, so you can just fork the code afterwards. The slides are online. There is no need to write down anything. Everything you, you see here, you can just get yourself on your own PC later. Okay, let's go on. Um, well, I think, I assume you know Git. Um, so if you don't, well, read the slide afterwards. Uh, the only thing that is uh, mentionable here is that it's usually in branches and that, we, that I expect the master branch to be the production state where uh, I usually expect um, a software which is executable on a server and doesn't break things, you know? And um, in the all other branches, there might be some fancy thing going on, but not in master. Um, I assume you know Docker, and the only thing I use in Docker is basically I, I pull a Docker image, um, but I'll show you later. So if you don't know Docker, well, it's a nice thing, so have a look. Um, and getting straight next to continuous delivery. Well, that is what Wikipedia tells us. Wikipedia tells us that, we, um, that continuous delivery is a software engineering approach in which teams produce software in a short cycle, ensuring that the software can be reliable, released at any time. And uh, I think the next sentence is that one that actually is really important. Uh, it aims at building, testing, releasing software in a fast and frequent manner. And that's basically um, what, I, what I define continuous delivery to be and wanna, what I want to use um, as a, as a well, framework and to derive my tools. Okay? So um, that's the definition again, starting with uh, building. So, our building is basically we want to make it executable, okay? 
uh, which means from, from my point of view, um, I have to not only build it somewhere, but I only have to care for dependencies and make it in like a bundle which is executable, uh, relatively independent from the platform it is distributed to. Um, because I want to always have, you know, regardless of the platform, I want to have the same results, you know. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, the next thing is testing. Well, you should test all relevant functionality and um, obviously you need to uh, release it so you might find a, you need to find a way to um, deploy your software somewhere. So you may have to make it accessible, you know, if you want to install it. And in a fast and frequent manner means for me uh, I want to be as fast as possible and that is usually fully automated. And I also want to um, be as frequent as possible, which means every stable release I'm having in my repository, and that is usually every tagged version in master, I want to have a deployment process running on. Okay, so which tools to that? Um, we can, um, I've chosen this set of tools, and uh, I will uh, explain you later why. Um, for the building, I use Conda, which is a really nice package manager for Python. Uh, for testing, we usually use PyTest, but it's kind of out of scope here. Uh, well, I could have uh, talked another two hours about PyTest probably, uh, but so you can read yourself about PyTest if you wish. Um, and for um, releasing, I'm using Anaconda.org, which is uh, just also a platform from the uh, Conda uh, environment. And for anything else, like the whole pipelining, I use GitLab. Um, so let's go on. Uh, Conda is the Python package manager and it's, uh, well, well, give me a second because I have to maybe see if I can get this better because it's, it's kind of shady that I, um, it's a pity that I don't see my own slides so I have to, always have to turn my head. So see if I make, maybe can better, make it better. Hopefully it doesn't break too much. Ah, oh, that's... Uh, that's better. Anything? Yeah, I think. Well, maybe not. Sorry for the for this short interruption. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay, that one's better. Um, Condor is a package manager. Um, it's actually originated in the Anaconda Python distribution, which is like the famous scientific Python distribution. Um, ah, oh, come on. Um, sorry for that one, that was my bad, I think. Um, error. Okay. Okay, once more. Uh, no. That's okay? Yeah. Um, Conda is a, a package manager. Um, it's open source, what's really nice, and it's multi-platform, so you can use it on Windows, Linux, uh, and obviously Mac. Um, it's pretty much designed for Python, so that makes it easy to work with, and it has like 600 plus Python packages out of the box, so you can just like, the, the, the Anaconda people, they just have a repository online where you can get like NumPy, some uh, scikit-learn, Pandas, all the standard tools, basically everything, or a, most of the stuff which is on PyPy is also available as a Conda package, pre-packaged for you, so you can just install it with one line of uh, code in your bash. And um, the nice thing is also, which is really relevant for us, because we have a lot of C-level packages which we don't write ourselves, but we need to install them too, you know, for like file I.O. operations. And um, you can just build any software language. It doesn't really matter as long as it, as it, as, well, as it, well, it doesn't need to be executable anyway, I think. I think you can just uh, deploy a text file, if you like, with Conda as well. Um, so, and if you uh, are now like a little bit teased and think like, ah, oh, this could be interesting, um, and you don't know yet, there is a 30 minute introduction tour, which I can uh, really suggest you to do. Uh, because it's uh, like a great start and you can see like very fast uh, how this can actually be useful. Um, next thing is the Anaconda Cloud. That is like a commercial serv service which is offered also by Anaconda Inc. Um, it allows to, do, to share your Conda build packages, it offers a free tier and it's also uh, very well integrated and that's basically the three reasons why I've chosen it here. 
I wanted to make up like a pipeline which you can instantly use for EG open source, even if you have no money at all, and um, can use it if you have like like a more if you're like a commercial company and you maybe think like, oh, that's too expensive, or maybe I want to have more control about my packages, then you can just set up a very quick version of, of something similar yourself. And um, we've done that. So we have like a private repository, um, also kind of a private proxy where we cache uh, packages. And if you're interested in that and like think like, oh, this sounds great, I want to have it, well, there are some little tricks that you need to know, or you can like spend like a few weeks more on, on distributing that. So if you're interested in, in setting up something like this, well, contact me and I would be happy if you can share our knowledge in some way. Um, last tool uh, that I'm using is GitLab. Uh, GitLab is, uh, I think, the main competitor for uh, GitHub. It's an op also core open source project with uh, 1,700 contributors. So, by the way, no strings attached, okay? So um, I'm not paid by them to tell you this. Um, it's still a commercial product, and um, it integrates basically the GitHub features like Git version control, but uh, it has also um, a bucket feature management, documentation, and that is like the main difference to GitHub. It has a full-blown pipeline that you can run, and um, it's also very different from GitHub. It offers a uh, free community edition, which you can host yourself on your own servers. Um, and it has also free plans for which you can use like most of the functionality you don't need as a power user. You know? So if you have like deploying like, I don't know, 2,000 packages a month, then maybe the free version is not the right choice, but maybe you earn some money with those 2,000 packages, so it might be okay for you. Um, the picture below you've seen is um, basically the the workflow which is introduced when you um, when you uh, run a pipeline. It is, you have some code here. Um, you will maybe commit a, a change to your master branch or some well whatever you've configured your pipeline to run. Uh, you will have sev uh, several stages, a build, a unit test. So this is all free configurable, and um, maybe some integration tests. So whatever you find useful for yourself. Um, and after you've run all those stages, you can just uh, really deploy it directly out of, out of GitLab, uh, GitLab. So make it maybe a review if you wish, um, and then push it into production. Um, so now it's hands-on time. Um, well, what you must do before you follow the next step is you must uh, create an account on GitLab, which is, like I said, free. You must uh, have an account on Anacondacom, which you can also uh, create for free. Uh, you probably need to have a shell ready, so um, I tested Bash and nothing else. So if you use something fancy, uh, your own private shell, so maybe you have to change the commands. Uh, you need Git and Tar, and um, if you wish to install the package we are building, then you have to have inst uh, Conda installed. Um, to see if it works. So um, this is basically, um, uh, um, some pictures how you can create a project. So I think that was pretty obvious. It's just for you that you can file the fi uh, fields if at home. Um, you need to get um, GitLab access to your Anaconda Cloud account because it needs to upload the package there because it's not, not going on your local machine. It goes directly from one server to the next. So you need to create a token. And um, these are basically the checkboxes you need to, to set the minimal rights you need to give GitLab to, uh, to do so. And once you've done it, you can just uh, add this token um, as a secret variable. Well, there's a little question mark on the homepage if you do so, which explains you what it is, why it's not nice and everything. And it's, it's a more safe way of doing this than just typing in your uh, pipelining script your username and password, because that one is basically visible for every, everybody. You know? So that's maybe not the best idea. Um, once uh, you start. Um, this is basically now three slides with uh, just bash script. And um, as I wanted to make it clear for you where you need to uh, change stuff in order to, um, to, get your, um, to get it on your own repository, I just had like the first uh, header is basically some variables. There's three vari variables and if you change them, you can run the rest and execute it and don't need to touch anything. Um, so uh, let us go into interactive mode. 
and now let's see if the fun uh, is actually working. Um, ah, yeah. As I uh, assumed that the Wi-Fi is not working at all, I have um, I have um, preloaded everything. So I've done this. Yeah, I've uh, checked out the repository. Um, I have uh, yeah, I've gone into that and. I've even checked out like the the demo files which I wanted to show you. Um, okay, let's see. And um, basically, well, let's, this is my testing project here. CD test. Oh. And um, all you've seen here is like, this is like, uh, the the files which you can get from my repository, which is the the minimal viable setup for you to run a pipeline. And um, all I'm going to do ne next is basically. Um, these steps here, I'm going to um, edit, commit it, and push it. And uh, once you've done this, the pipeline will already run because it takes some time, like maybe five to hopefully not ten minutes. And while the pipeline runs already, I will show you uh, which files you need and uh, what they do and what for. So see, that one uh, should work already. Okay, new branch, fair enough. Um, so that's already in production now, and now we can have a look at the at the uh, demo project. This was empty before, so I just added it like a second ago, and these are already like the, like two pipelines, and I'll tell you later why they run. So um, this is the GitLab repository where you find the presentation, which is actually here. You find again some ways of contacting me, and uh, you will get the link afterwards. So in the last slide. Um, the example project, which I just shown you, consists of like this content here, uh, and the first thing which you want to know, uh, want to see, is the GitLab C. So this is um, a text file defining the pipeline. This uh, de it defines how you, uh, what happens once you want to start your continuous integration. And um, it, what it does is it catches a Docker image, and that kind it's uh, justly the Anaconda image, which calls the Conda installation, which I need later for uh, building packages and everything. Um, it will do an update and will build the uh, install the the packages I need for building a package and for communicating with the Anaconda cloud. And then it defines that it's uh, three stages in my um, pipeline. The first one is building, the second one is testing, and the third one is deploying. And now this is like the first stage. All it does is it um, executes the build command, conda build, and says that it should make a package with Python 3.5. And uh, when this stage is successful, it will uh, start the next stage, which is uh, test stage. And the test stage will build again because they are independent of each other, like all the stages. They are like separated on different machines. Um, will build again. It will create a new environment with the build packages we've I've just built, and will um, activate this environment and say just print it like a command. So, if that everything in, if these steps um, work, well, I, w I know that the package works. And last day, um, last thing is um, deployment. Deployment is uh, again, this is uh, configuring that the that it wants should upload. To Anaconda Cloud, and this is again building, but this time with an uh, with an upload command in there. And in my example, the deploy stage is only triggered if we have a, like a commit to master, and uh, that commit is tagged. You know, if there is a new tag, and that, uh, it's the only thing that will run the pipeline. Um, yeah. So getting back, um, this is the um, example project. Um, it consists, of, well, of an init file. You probably know that, and um, this is like a minimal example I've created. It, it uh, imports NumPy because I wanted to show you that you can use a dependency very easily here, and it's just a simple print statement. So um, that's everything it does. And the next thing I want to show you is actually the the build repository. Um, the conda build directory, which is, um, I think it's a common convention to use that name, and it holds one file which explains the conda package manager what he needs to do uh, once he, he wants to build this package or everything else. Also, if you, if you install it, the uh, conda will use this information from this meta file um, to, to describe the package. And it does is um, 
there is a package, it's called continuous delivery tester, and it, it gets the version from the git describe tag. So that's like the last tag, the, um, uh, the last um, version tag that it, that it finds. Um, it's, skip that. Um, we have another thing which is really nice here. It's an, it's an entry point, and an entry point is basically um, like a bin, like an entry to bin. So uh, once you've installed this package and you are in the environment, in the corresponding environment, you can just, in my case here, tip, type, hello, PyCon, and then it will call the Python script wherever it resides and um, execute this function. So that's like really convenient way of getting like maybe any, any Python object started because all you do is in the end do like a define main and then you can call the main and it will start your class and your class can take over world domination or whatever. Um, last section is, or no, not the second last uh, section is requirements. That is basically dependency management, okay? So um, you can define here what packages Condon needs to either build or run this package. And in my case is the Python, uh, Python itself. So you need to tell them which Python version it needs to install. And also, as I want to show you that you can use dependencies, we use NumPy here. And this is um, not to confuse with the tests in GitLab. This is independent of GitLab. It's a test that is run um, while building. And if, you, uh, if this test fails, your first stage, like the build stage, will already fail. So it's maybe nice if you have some, if you want to make sure that the, that the build process can really succeed. Okay. Um, then last thing is a setup pu file. Um, that is usually executed in the, while building the package and it tells uh, Conda which folders he should use from your package because they could be like in the example project there could be much, whoops, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in the example project could be much, much more content. There could be like a testing folder which you maybe not want to de deploy or you want to deploy. There could be some documentations which you don't need in production and then you can um, tell the setup who file which folders you, you need and also, which is interesting, if you build namespace packages, so distributed repositories which all share some namespace, then you can uh, have to define it here as well. Um, okay, I think that's even it. Uh, and now to the interesting part, the pipelining. Um, so we'll see if that one's finished yet. I don't think so. Um, oh, yes it is. Um, this is like the, the overview for like the example project I just pushed before. And um, it like um, starting of the, the GitLab YAML file, which I... Maybe I have, have it here. Um, again, uh, like keep in mind these, these stages, build, test, deploy, and you will find out that you have like these stages here. It's like, it's like build, test, and because this one, the first, um, the first commit is not tagged, it will not deploy, and here it has a tag, it says like 0, 0, point, uh, 0, point, 0 point 0.0.1. Um, it's the, it runs build, test, and deploy. And nice thing is, you can then just have a look at the, at the log. And this is basically the, well, not too short log about what has happened. And, um, well, it, it uh, basically tells you uh, all you've uh, explained to you before. It uh, creates a Docker image. Um, it uh, you, uh, runs Conda update. So afterwards, it will uh, install the packages um, that I've shown you, like the build and the Anaconda Cloud packages. It will um, build the package, and then there's a lot of noise about what happens when it's building a package. And in the end, that's it. Okay, so it says job, su uh, job successful. Um, and if you now have a look at the... So usually you don't really look at... Um, you don't really look at these logs as long as everything's fine. Yeah, well, you don't have to look, have a look in it. If uh, if they're failing, then you this is probably the only chance you're having to finding out what went wrong. Um, okay, so um, I see that the stages of the final one didn't really succeed yet. 
Oh, too bad. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, it, it's not finished yet, but um, all it would differ then if it would be successful. There is a little green checkbox here telling you that your deployment has finished. And um, now we come to how you can integrate then your deployed package. Uh, well, that is kind of really easy. Um, it's basically this command here. It tells you um, it uses um, a create an environment, a virtual environment. Um, it's called CD Tester. It in installs the package CD Tester, and it uses it for uses for that my own private uh, Anaconda.com channel, which the package should have been uploaded to once the pipeline is run. You know, like finished running, and uh, all you've got, like after this command, well, it's installed on your system. It has flown once to America and back, the package, and um, then all you have to do is, have a look here. So all you have to do is source activate um, CD tester, the environment. I've also uh, installed it previously to prevent any network errors. Thanks. And what you can do then is type hello Oops, sorry. Thanks. Uh, and what you can do then is call the entry point I've shown you before, that was hello PyCon, and then it says hello PyCon. That's it. Wasn't too hard, was it? Yeah. Thank you very much for this nice talk. We still have like five minutes, but then the photo starts. So just before I answer questions, remember the photo will be at 12.30 there in this large hall. So please, after we finish, all get out and let them take a photo. So other questions? Uh, one thing, this is the repository. Um, so you can just uh, grab slides, demo files, everything in there which should give you an option to just build up this for your own project in a very fast manner. Yep. Um, have you tried to store the artifact and not building it in every step again? Yes, but uh, GitLab documentation says that you should not do this um, because they uh, might run it on different clusters or machines. And uh, so they, they will like run an own Docker container for every stage and just collapse it afterwards because it's easier for them. But if you have a, a private repository, you could build one to push it in there, but, you know, well, you don't lose anything, you know? It's like uh, there is for, I think, there's 2,000 minutes computation time on GitLab, and uh, one deployment is usually something like five minutes, something like this. So you, even if you have pushed like 100 times a month, you don't save anything which is worth, you know? But I think it will cut half or so. Well, the problem is, like, you know, the... Um, if you're, if you're like a free user um, on, on GitLab, it's usually not the build process which takes very long, but it's actually waiting for you to become uh, in the right place in the queue and your Docker container starts, well, it starts anything, you know? So most time it's like five minute wait and then it's like 10 seconds execution or something, you know, or like 15 seconds, so it's not really worth it. Okay. How would you deploy to, let's say, your own hosted Debian Ubuntu server from within a GitLab, either GitLab.com or your own hosted GitLab instance? Oh, you would install them or what? You can build your stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but how do you deploy your code on your own server afterwards? Like to make it executable? After the building step. So uh, in the deploy step. Actually. Ah, okay. Uh, well, basically just by building it and assets age copy to your whatever own repository is, you know? Or like you sh usually should have a repository, a private repository. You can either use anaconda.com or use build up your own repository. Um, you could still, well, you could do maybe do some bash magic and just copy the package to your local machine where you want to deploy and install this, this package. So this would probably work as well, but it's not so nice, you know? So you would have in the deploy script basically just inform the remote server to get the build product. Well, once you're trying yeah. to get to inter continuous integration, you, all, we, all you would do is the last step is 
give it a note, maybe a, a curl push or something, saying like you can now update your or okay. install the package. Yeah, okay. that's all you do. So basically, this is uh, like the, the uh, sorry, this is all you need to trigger on your host is basically um, this line of code, you know, and maybe one line before which tells you if you have that environment, well, uh, destroy it and build it new. Okay, a last short question maybe. Then maybe short answer, how easy is it to deploy to Conda and to PyPy at the same time? Have you tried maybe? No, I, from, from my point of view, I, there is no reason for me why I want to push anything to PyPy at the moment. Because um, I use all Conda and um, I don't want to have PyPy because it's, uh, it's, it, it may integrate, but uh, it may also break things, you know, and make it, makes it uh, complicated. All right, then. Oh, very good.